Hello, everybody. I'm Geetika Ganjudhar, your host for the day, and I'm so excited to welcome you one and all to the Content Marketing Summit 2014. As the winter outside recedes, things here in this conference will heat up as the greatest minds, most savvy brands, most renowned publishers, innovative technology enablers and practitioners will come together to explore the exciting world of content marketing. To begin this morning and render the welcome address, I'd like to invite forward the conference chair, Mr. R.P. Singh. Welcome him forward with a little round of applause. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning. Content is king. Wrong. It is an entire kingdom. Very good morning to all of you present here to witness something which has not been done in Asia yet. I want to thank ACMA for extending their support to host first edition of CMS Asia in this country. Somewhere back in 2013, we discussed the possibility of hosting this in India. And many asked, what is content marketing? And that's when we at Content Cafe decided that we need to answer that question emphatically by educating our industry about content marketing. So here we are. I won't take much of your time because rich and interesting sessions are coming your way. But before we do that, I want to thank our partners, our principal partner, our brain, our associate partners, Tabula and Zerka, our knowledge partner, Yahoo, our TV partner, NDTV Profit, and all other partners without which this event would not have been possible. So ladies and gentlemen, I take the proud moment to declare CMS Asia 2014 open. Thank you. Well, thank you, Mr. Singh, for the welcome address. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, without further delay, it's ready, steady, po. Our first speaker this morning, Mr. Umang Bedi, is a managing director, Adobe Systems for South Asia. Good morning, Mr. Bedi. Good morning. It's over Yadika. to you. Thanks. I mean, I didn't know I did that much, by the way. Uh, but good morning. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. And, uh, you know, I was wondering how to address, I was asking RP in the morning, what's the audience in the room and what's the Photoshop guy, you know, starting this whole session off with, is it going to really make sense? But I'm going to try and take you through. Um, so without further ado, well, let me just start off. You know, if you think about the world that we're living in, whether you call us content marketers, I've, I firstly was introduced to this term by RP itself. I was like, what is content marketing? How does it differ from digital marketing? But I'm going to use content and digital uh, you know, loosely together because I think all the content that we're creating in, good old, in the good old days went into print, went into television, and increasingly, all of that is going online. Uh, all of that is going digital, it's going into tablets, it's going into mobile devices. So if you think about the world around us, uh, you know, the content marketing or digital marketing is moving really, really fast. It's getting more and more sophisticated. What Adobe has done is, you know us for our creative technology. You know, all of you have used our tools to create content, whether it's online, whether it's on the web, whether it's video, whether it's for print, right? We've taken that entire business into the cloud, and that's what we've called our creative cloud platform. And we built the largest digital marketing business on the planet. So today, we, whatever I described, we do this for about 15,000 brands globally, from a Citibank to a Make My Trip to a Flipkart to anyone who's serious about his online business, about 15,000 global brands. We measure about 40 trillion transactions a year for these brands in terms of real-time analytics and have about $4 billion of advertising spend move through our platform. So that's what we do as a, uh, as a business. But lastly, if I could just leave you with three things, right? Uh, while the listen, predict, assemble, and deliver uh, content in real time or in the last millisecond is more at a pr practitioner level. If you have to get started, what do you do, right? So these are my three takeaways that I'd leave you with. The first one is engage everywhere. You gotta be thinking about taking that content and engaging, whether it's on social, whether it's on search, whether it's in print, whether it's on television. You gotta be have you gotta have a mechanism to engage everywhere. If you don't. Trust me, your competitor will. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, I come to the end of my presentation. I try to make it 
quick and uh, short. I'm, I'm, I'm anyway available offline, so we can always have a chat. But great talking to you. Thanks so much for your time, and you've been really patient. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Bedi. We'd like to thank you with a memento. Mr. R.P. Singh will do the honors. Please stay with me here on the dais. Thank you for your time and your participation. Well, my uh, takeaway from his talk was that um, someone knows you in and out. Someone's watching you all the time, ooh. And that uh, content marketing today is uh, the most vital ingredient in the marketing communication mix. And that this revolution has not quietly but very loudly taken our lives and businesses over. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, our next speaker, Mr. Ankur Variku, is a regional head of APAC Emerging Markets, comprising of India, Indonesia, Thailand, and Philippines. He's CEO, Group on India Operations, and co-founder, Accentium Web. He's going to be now stepping forward and talking to you all about experiential marketing and as to how to target the next generation of customers with content. Here he comes. So I, I look after India, Indonesia, Philippines, and Thailand, uh, truly four markets that are changing the way content is consumed. It is fascinating when I see every day how consumers are engaging with content on a daily basis and how brands are going way above what they've been doing in the historical past to connect with these audiences. When you see the biggest brands around you, they're all about connections. And we are dealing with them, and they are creating value not just for us, but for the brand as well. And this connection has given us this fancy term of experiential marketing. What I would do is pick up instances that Groupon India went about and try and come up with what are the five top things that you should ask yourself as a brand when you are about to get into experiential marketing. Nothing of this would be rocket science. Nothing of this is something you don't know. What I'm going to attempt is try and intercept the questions with the specific experience that Groupon executed and help you think of how it can happen for your brand as well. Number one is who should I target? It's the most fundamental thing, but it becomes harder when you're talking about experiential marketing. If you want to connect with the audience in a way that's experience enabled, you have to very accurately identify who you wish to engage. Second, how do I connect? In experiential marketing, that's the most fundamental question you're asking. What is it that you're going to do when the consumer is right in front of you engaging with your brand? What is the experience that you're going to deliver to that consumer and how? We are a very local brand. We are all about deals near you, deals in your city. And we always have pockets of less engagement and high engagement, as would be for any other business similar to ours. So we identified about 53-odd locations which were underpenetrated for us as a brand. And these are very micro in nature. They go down to the level of a pin code, at times even localities, where we have lesser engagement. So we have enough supply of great deals, but we don't necessarily have enough demand coming in. And in those cases, it's very hard for you to do online marketing, to even do content, to even do brand, do mass media, so on and so forth, because it's just very micro in nature. Third, is the experience unique to the customer? What you don't want to do is be the same noodle store or kiosk at every mall trying to get them to sample it, or the same Coke drink, or the same place, so on and so forth. You have to create an experience that is unique for the customer so that he or she thinks that you truly know what they want or would like to experience. Next one is also the fact that is the experience unique to the brand? Are you standing for something or are you creating an experience that truly stands for what your brand is about? You cannot be doing virtually anything and everything just because you want to get the customer to experience your brand. Uh, is creating a kiosk in a mall the right thing for your brand? Is creating an interactive screen when they are traveling somewhere, so on and so forth, the right thing? Is doing anything else uh, the right thing for your brand as against what some other brand would have done? And finally, when you are thinking of experiential marketing as a channel or as an effective medium for how you execute your marketing plans, you will generate a lot of content and a lot of unique, high quality content. Because that's perhaps the only way where you are measuring your customer engaging with your brand and almost recording their reactions the way it's happening. How you capitalize on that, which is the last point, is truly 
whether experiential marketing will take you to the next level or pretty much stay at the local one. And each of those five questions will always be the fundamental questions that you're driving at when you think of how experiential marketing should go. Great. Thank you so much. That's all I had to share. Get ready to check out the best properties on offer in the Mumbai region on ADTV's next edition of Webcam TV show. These are MMR's top residential projects with every detail you need to know. Only on NDTV.com and NDTV Profit. Log in right now. Best property by MMR. Brought to you by Tata Housing. Gateway to an iconic lifestyle. Ruparo Realty. Innovative lifestyle ahead. Rajesh Lifestyle. Crafting spaces. Creating legacies. Fashion meets technology. Exclusive online partner, indiapropertycom And radio partner, FM Boleto, Radio City 91.1 Nokri chhod di mene Aaj ke beech kal ke problems aa gaye to Holiday pe chale Office se chutti bhi nahi lene padegi Plan hai Birla Sun Life Insurance ke savings with protection solutions Aaj ko enjoy kijiye Aur kal ke plans ko surakshit rakhiye To life ne aapke liye kya plan kiya hai मैं अपने बीवी और बच्चों से बहुत प्यार करता हूं। उनकी हर छोटी से छोटी ख्वाहिशों को पूरा करने के लिए दिन रात बहुत मेहनत करता हूं। क्योंकि ये मेरा फर्ज है लेकिन एक फर्ज और भी है एक फर्ज जिसे खेतों की हरियाली गाती है कल के सुनहरे सपनों के लिए एक फर्ज जिससे मिटती है हजारों दिलों की दूरी है आइए देश के सपनों को सच बनाए नागरिक होने का फर्ज निभाए ईमानदारी से अपना टैक्स चुका इंडिया में कोई भी किसी को उल्लू बना सकता है बेचारों को कोई आइडिया ही नहीं है आइडिया है उल्लू बना नो उल्लू अफ्रीका में उल्लू मत बना समझे इस रोज को चांद पे कैसे भेजोगे गुलाब जामुन इट्स माय ओरिजिनल ओए व्हाट्सएप पे एक मैंने तो धक्के खा रहे हैं जो उल्लू बनाऊंगी दो दो बाबा को चांदी सोने में बारिश होगी कोने कोने में बारिश हो ना बारी है आइडिया इंटरनेट जब लगावेंगे इंडिया को नो उल्लू बनावेंगे और मोबाइल पर इंटरनेट व्हाट एन इंडिया सर जी व्हाट एन आइडिया उल्लू नो उल्लू बनावेंगे नो उल्लू बनावेंगे इफ यू वांट टू बी ऑन ग्लोबल सिनेमा you have to tell the stories you wish to the songs the music that you want to the expressions that you want to express but you really need to put it in the garb of what the world is used to i think it is highly improbable and highly i think selfish of creative people in this country if we are not able to change ourselves according to the needs and the way they are used to watching uh, cinema or any other kind of art form i'm i'm not saying that we should lose out the uniqueness of our storytelling our culture these are words which have been uh, you know impressed upon us imbibed in our dna and this is what we are brought up like this is ndtv and you're watching NDTV Profit All right here we are with our panel discussion let's find out let's talk i hand it over to our moderator mr abhimanyu radha krishnan abhimanyu it's over to you now thanks thank you so much uh it seems like the entire session uh, taking it out on traditional ad agencies by saying things like stop thinking campaign don't use the word ad uh, it's pretty disruptive uh, for the agency business would you agree <clears throat> yeah i i think i'd like just like to start by saying that uh, by pointing a finger in their direction it's like saying we know but the the whole concept is that uh, this this space is really evolving so i'm not sure whether all of us have the right answers or not but i think uh, you know truly what is happening is there's a change uh, 
and even if you look at the way the agencies were structured, I worked in Ogilvy years ago, and we had one guy with all the solutions, whether it was media, whether it was creative or PR, you know, you just uh, took everything to the client. And the client had one partner to listen to. Uh, all I think is the life has, life has become very difficult for a marketing head when he's got, you know, 10 different guys doing uh, 10 different jobs for the agency. Uh, and at some level, they might be at cross purposes. So uh, we're seeing examples now, uh, like uh, in Anthony's case, you've got JWT, Mindshare, and uh, Wonderman coming together. So again, somebody providing an integrated service. So I truly think going forward, it's going to be about collaboration. Now, the big question is who's going to lead that collaboration? Uh, and if content is going to be uh, what brands are going to use to engage with their consumers, then is the advertising agency going to make the shift into storytelling uh, or they're still going to stay with the 30 second commercial? Right. I think that's the question we need to ask ourselves. Anthony, would you like to take that? Because there seems to be this mentality that advertising is about talking about yourself in a very short burst, usually interruptive, whereas content marketing seems to be almost the re reverse of that. So would you agree with that to a large extent? Yeah, the answer would be yes and no in that sense, because, uh, yeah, it is very true that some people had pointed fingers, and for the right reasons as well, but not entirely. Uh, we cannot say that everything they said was right in that sense. Because one of the fundamental uh, issues that we are facing today was something which happened many years ago, which is what even Sanjeev pointed out in terms of the unbundling which we did from the agency perspective, where we let go of all of these things. So some crucial skill sets which are required is now kind of sitting outside of the agency uh, structure. Now, having said that, the agencies have also for many years I mean, evolution has not really touched the agency business for too, too many years now. And for many years, it's been sitting in a space where there's a traditional way of doing things, or there's a brief, and then there is an output, which typically is a creative product, a 30-seconder or a radio spot, and then boom, comes something else. And also the difference is when this has always been a dissemination kind of a mode. I tell you what, uh, what I want to tell you, and it's a bullet theory of communication. But today, that's kind of changed because the consumers want to talk back to you. And it's a very strange place to be in, and agencies are still struggling to figure out how to be uh, you know, engaging in that kind of an environment. So, Let me take that further with a recent example. Gautam, Rahul Gandhi gives a speech at CII. A day later, a 16 or 17-year-old kid has auto-tuned that and made that a huge viral hit on the internet. Where's the time for a brief in this, in this sort of environment? So, okay, I mean, I, I believe some agencies uh, you know, uh, have evolved or at least making concerted changes in terms of adding specialists. I think the general the generalist structure of the, the agency of the past continues to hold. And uh, the number of specialists that they're adding, uh, that is sort of multiplying. So if you look at uh, some of the new ones, so of course social is uh, you know, the, the newest large one. There's programmatic, which is sitting right behind it. Um, in the past, there's been mobile and social and search. And um, I think that this is an evolution and it'll continue happening. There isn't time for a brief to come back to your question, but um, uh, I think the right brands will find people who can uh, tell new stories and fresh stories every day and uh, you know, make this part of a dialogue rather than a six months or a broadcast. Tim, some international perspective to that. Your uh, firm has been around, as you said, for 30 years, so yes. you've seen this evolution. Yes. Uh, are you adapting fast enough? Yes, I think the model we have in France is quite interesting because uh, first, we look at the consumer, and right now the consumer is very demanding. He has changed his mindset because of uh, invasion of digital, uh, because of the economic crisis, and now he's expecting every brand to be useful to him. He doesn't have the time to, to see unexpected uh, advertising. So if he wants this experience, is he wants a global and fluid experience across all media. So it's not about what media you should select, etc., and what message. First, we should understand what kind of customer we are talking about. That's why we have completely changed the organization of a kind of traditional agency. And um, we have, uh, we have uh, uh, the objective is to propose uh, to the customer, to the consumer, a fluid experience. And we don't care if we are going to use digital, below the line, marketing services, PR, etc. In France, we have already a call center, we have a teaching company, uh, we have a research company, and all of this entity uh, sit in the same roof to be able to find what is the leverage, what is scalable with what point of contact, basically. So it, it's quite different from like advertising agency uh, as of now. Uh, Peter, yours is probably the smallest agency in terms of 
uh, maybe the youngest as well on this uh, panel, but uh, even recent agencies or even newer agencies, if they started out as digital and social, uh, the thinking seems to be that content is a totally different ball game and they may not have the mindset for it. Would you agree? I think so. And But I think fundamentally, if you just go down to the basics, it's all about good storytelling. And if people have that capability of telling the story, and not only just telling it, but telling it in a way that it becomes viral, that other people can pick it up and then carry the story forward. So it's as if it's handing over the baton. I think if that is achieved, I think then, you know, there's no barrier to that. And it can be in a large agency, it can be in a small agency format. But I think that is what the customer wants at the end of the day, or that is what we should be serving the customer to achieve. Uh, at this stage, we're just going to ask the audience any questions to uh, some of our panelists. Please do uh, introduce yourselves and uh, let us know the question and if it's specifically for any one panelist. Uh, actually, it's to the entire panelist. I'm Nilakshi. Hi, I uh, work with Anthony actually. My question is, uh, since uh, you're the right kind of people and this question has been bothering me for some time, I work as a traditional planner. Uh, I have the honor of working with digital analysts and a lot of other people, media planners. Uh, the takeout from the conversation is we are trying to say the right thing to the right people in the right way. If I just shorten it. And you talked about this, this new whole breed of content creators, if I may say, quote unquote. See, uh, the in but my question is, uh, are the processes really uh, strong enough to support such content creation? Because right now we work with different level of people. I have a media planner, I even have a mobile planner, I have a digital analyst, then I have uh, creative partners with whom we create content. Mm -hmm. But where is the ownership lies? As a traditional planner, I still struggle with the fact that I might have a great insight, but by the time it kind of goes down to the audience, uh, my, I might have just lost the whole nuance of what I'm trying to say, or the whole idea of storytelling. So my question is, is the processes right now in the traditional advertising or even in digital advertising uh, strong enough to kind of support uh, the whole cause of content creation? Gautam, you want to take that? Because we were just discussing so, when in doubt, a yeah. fire has been the strategy so far. <laughs> How are you so, managing all that? So there's two parts, right? I think that uh, it's a work in progress. We are clearly, um, uh, no one's there yet, right? But uh, will we get there? Absolutely. And I think it's not just us as a company, but as an industry, we, uh, uh, it's a work in progress. I mean, that's the simplest way I could put it. Uh, Sanjeev, you want to respond yeah. to some part of that? I think the, the point is that it's going to be different with different clients. You'll find somebody You'll find a client who believes in what you're saying or, you know, has faith in, uh, in reaching out to people and making friends with them, uh, in which case the job will become easier. And I think you really, the, you know, everybody talks about ROI. Your ROI is really good word of mouth because, you know, all of us are taking purchase decisions now <coughs> based on advice from our friends. So if you can get lots of people to say good stuff about your product, uh, that's really the ROI that you're looking for. Uh, and I think that's fairly measurable today. I mean, you, you have all kinds of, uh, uh, you know, softwares, you know, who are able to read into sentiment today. And uh, to me, that's really what it is. And again, there will be tactical stuff like, like the Ford EcoSport launch that we did with, uh, with Blue Hive, where we just engaged people across the country to create content. And the big job at that stage was, <coughs> will they do the test drive? And I, I think the, you know, that worked out very well. On the other hand, you'll have babycenter.com who's just, you know, advising mothers on everything that they need to know about kids and the, and the brand is, you know, really, really uh, uh, very, very soft uh, over there. But what they're doing is they're building a community of, uh, of mothers for whom their products are important. And, you know, they're, they're able to then reach out to them on an offline level. There are, once you build that community, then there are lots of ways to reach out to them and to market. So it's just about saying, you know, do you want to stand by saying, I am the brand, I stand for this? How about just worrying about the, con give the consumer first, and then you'll, you know, you'll get back lots in return, but learn to give. I think yeah. that's something that everybody needs to figure out. Uh, I'm sorry, we're, we've completely run out of time on this panel, but uh, if you have any more questions, please feel free to take them offline with our panelists. Thanks for being a great audience. and. Uh, Thank you very much, uh, panel members. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, it's now time to know who are the trailblazers, who are leading the way, 
who are the best at the rate content marketing here we are with the content marketing summit asia 2014 awards first one coming up content marketing brand of the year and this one goes to oreo i've been told we have representatives from the winners here with us in the audience please step forward and collect your award and ladies and gentlemen the day is all but over put your hands together everybody for these winners here today content marketing brand of the year oreo there congratulations and well done our next award coming up content marketing campaign of the year put your hands together for urban discoveries for ford eco sport <laughs> Content Marketing Campaign of the Year, Urban Discoveries for Ford Eco Sport. Congratulations. Fantastic. Next up, Content Marketing Personality of the Year. Put your hands together for Tara Sharma for the Tara Sharma Show. Congratulations to Tara Sharma and the Tara Sharma Show. Yes, we know. <laughs> for winning the Content Marketing Personality of the Year Award at the conference 2014. And next up, a content marketing innovator of the year. One guess, any guesses? Maruti Ertiga for Mere Dad Ki Maruti, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, this is your host Geetika saying, I've been introduced to a whole new world. I'm going to go back a better, more learned person. But for you, your party has just begun. Have a great evening ahead, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.